a great year. The new year is a chance for new beginnings and the best resolution we can make is to put God first. God has given us many blessings that we can use for His glory or for our own. Put God first and He will help you make the best choices in your life. 2023, here we are! Let's worship God this morning, afternoon, evening with all that we have and with all that we are.
From my body to money to our talents, which we can use to share God's love with others. But what I realized as I reflected upon 2022, unless we are first connected to God, we will never reach our full potential. We may live lives that are exciting and lavishing, but in the end, we'll be as empty and lost as a rich fool. <laughs> That reminds me of today's passage. If you haven't already, go and grab your Bibles. We are in the book of Luke, chapter 12 today. You know, when it's around the New Year's, you can tell, or not even the New Year's, you can always tell what time of the year it is by the commercials you see on TV, YouTube, or maybe here on the radio, or even the decorations at school or church. For example, if you are seeing a lot of decorations or advertisements for flowers, fancy restaurants, lots of hearts, and lots of talks of love, what time of the year do you think it is? Hmm? If you said Valentine's or February, you are absolutely right. Let's try another one. How about if you see a lot of diamonds, toys, elves, and boxes with red bows, uh, nutcrackers, what else? Snowflakes, what time of the year do you think that is? Uh-huh, Christmas. How about if you see a lot of clocks going on diets, setting new habits, new calendars, talks about resolution, firecrackers, boom, no firework signs. What time of the year do you think that is? New Year's! <laughs> New Year's is a day that many people use as a motivator to change the big things in life. When the calendar changes, people make resolutions. And resolutions, my friends, are commitments that people make to change something big or make changes in their lives. For example, I'm going to eat healthier. Well, not me. These are some resolution ideas, okay? I'm going to get faster at running. I'm going to wake up before mom and dad wakes me up. Or I'm going to study really hard to get better grades. I'm going to be different. Many of the resolutions people make are very positive and wise. For adults, it's like getting out of debt and maybe getting healthier. But for students, maybe it can be making new friends or doing your homework on time or maybe playing less video games. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing really wrong with wanting to make these changes or do better in life. 
But as we all take a look at our lives and ways to improve ourselves, I want us to ask one question first. What's most important in my life? What is the number one thing? Huh? Is my number one thing my family? Is it money? Is it school? Is it sports, friends, or is it just me? And if you answered yes to any of these questions, then I have a question, or not a question, a resolution for you. It's time that you put God where he belongs as your number one. <laughs> Jesus told a story about a man who might have made one of those I want to get ahead resolutions. He doesn't give the man a formal name. He rarely did that in his parables, but Jesus always gave us a name to remember his characters, the good Samaritan, the prodigal son, the wise and foolish builders. This man that we're gonna talk about today, we remember him as the rich fool. Let's watch this Bible story together. Stories of the Bible. The Parable of the Wealthy Man. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness, performed many miracles like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. One day, a crowd gathered around Jesus to hear him talk. The crowd was so big that people were stepping on each other. Hey, watch it! Jesus was talking to his disciples when someone called out from the crowd. Hey, Jesus! Teacher, tell my brother to divide with me the property our father left us. Ah, uh, hold on there. Jesus said, friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Be careful and guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life is not measured by the many things he owns. Huh? Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Hmm. Ah, I got it. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. And I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. <laughs> now take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. <laughs> but God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. <laughs> Wait, what? Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. I can almost see this story unfolding at New Year's. It's the start of a new day and a new life for this rich fool, and all of a sudden, his wildest dream has come true. He is rich beyond measures. He can kick back, take it easy, and never work again. But God has a message for the rich fool. You will never get to enjoy a day of your selfish life. Before you even lay the foundation for the storage barns, you will die. And what will become of all the wealth you gained? Like I said before, there's nothing inherently wrong with wanting to make more money or even enjoy life. So, where did the rich fool go wrong? Hmm? He forgot the one who blessed him. He looked only to himself and he didn't put the Lord first. God had a plan for the rich fool. He blessed him with the great harvest that could be used to feed those in need. Like Joseph, who rose from prison to become number two in Egypt, he could have used his surplus to feed those less fortunate and care for the weak. 
The rich fool is called a fool because he chose to serve only his own needs, and he died before he could even enjoy it. Friends, God has a plan for every one of you, and God wants to make you, or he wants to be a part of the process as we make resolutions about our lives. And I'm gonna share with you three practical ways. How many? One, two, three. How we can make wise choices at New Year's and all year long. And that is today, because today is January 1st. So, number one, say number one. Give God your time. Can you say give God your time? Remember to take time for God every day and spend time alone with him. If you look through the gospels, you will notice a pattern in the life of Jesus. He was always going off by himself to pray. Jesus was always taking time to get away, get on his knees and reconnect with his father. If Jesus, the son of God, needed alone time with God, how much more do you think we need it? Yep, a whole lot. Time alone with God helps us to stay focused on the Lord. We think less of our own wants and we see more of what God wants. We see the needs and the people around us and God makes us more prepared to meet those needs and shine his light in other people's lives. Amen? Second, say number two. Remember everything you have is a gift from God. Can you say, everything I have is a gift from God. You see, the money that you earn, or that you will earn, the talents that you have, the body you live in, everything comes from God. And it is our responsibility to make wise choices about those gifts and to use them for God's glory. Not ours, but God's and God's alone. Taking care of our bodies is a wise choice. The Bible says the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and we need to keep our bodies healthy. The Bible also urges believers to use their money wisely and not go into debt. Don't waste your money. We are caretakers of God's money, so use your money wisely. Give offering to our Lord with a grateful heart, for He is the giver of all things. Number three, say three. Ask God what He wants you to do with your gifts. Ask God, ask Him. If you're an athletic, God can use that to His glory. If you're a quick learner and love studying the Bible, like me, God has a plan for you to use those gifts. And if you are a wizard at math and science, God has a plan for those gifts as well. If you are artistically gifted, I'm not quite it, but if you are artistically gifted, God has a plan for you. With all of our gifts comes temptation to use them for our own glory. Just look at the headlines at grocery stores, you'll see what I mean. Athletes, celebrities, and business people use their gifts for their own gain all the time. But God wants you to be different. He wants you to live holy, to live set apart. Our gifts, listen carefully, our gifts are not for our glory, but for God's alone. If you and I are wise, we will not build storehouses to stockpile our gifts. We will use them to share God's love with others, amen? And when you look back on your life, 50 or 60 years from now, what do you hope to see? And I know, 50 to 60 feels like a long time and it's not gonna come, but friends, 50, 50 to 60 years will soon come. So what kind of person do you hope to be? What kind of adult do you want to be? Will you be a person who did it his or her way and lived only for the moment? YOLO! 
you only live once? Or will you be someone who took everything God gave them and used those gifts for God's glory? WWJD, what would Jesus do? The rich fool could have done so much good if he hadn't thought only of himself. So boys and girls, make a resolution to put God first this year and ask God to show you how to use your gifts for his glory. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the relationship you offer us. Holy Spirit, teach us how to make time to spend with you every single day. This year, I pray that our friends will choose to make you first in their hearts and in their lives. I pray that we will become people that seek your will for everything and let you help us in our daily decisions. God, you have a plan for each and one of us. You have blessed us with so much. So help us to choose you and make you first in our lives. 2022 was a roller coaster, but we made it through by your grace. Help us to enjoy the adventure 2023 will bring. Lord, we are ready for the ride because you, Jesus, you are our seatbelt. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.